But now, if they did get the mortgage paid off at, at the Supreme Court, not the housing court, because what you're dealing with is corporate mismanagement in this case. I would like to initiate my new haircut with my favorite public access producer, <laughs> Harold Channer. Good to see you, Paula. You're looking grand, Thank really you. good. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Sorry your hairdresser show. passed, you know. Yes. He was a wonderful guy. Yes, Mark Rogers yes. passed yes. away. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I now have Carol, who's one of the therapy group members at uh, Jane Goldberg's Really Real Reality TV group therapy. Wonderful. So she did yeah. this for me yesterday down in Who does in your East hair, Village. dear? We must know. Yes, yeah. Carol. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and she actually had a celebrity sighting because mm. of the show. Somebody recognized her because of being on Jane's show. Poppy darned, isn't that a something? Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. Anyway, good to see you down So yeah. we're now 58 seconds into it, uh -huh. more or less, and I'm using your little... Um, Timer there. Yes, so, to know, keep so track of it. congratulations on you're doing a, an hour show now. Yeah, so it it's gives you a little bit more room to breathe and everything. Exactly. So it's it's so appropriate to finally have you as a guest where I can honor you with the full 58 minutes, yeah. and not just 28. Well, yeah, and we're going to do some other. So it's really good to see you. And uh, I'm tired, but let's talk. Okay? Great. Now in the control room we have Shanti and Josh Walensky. Great and team. So if either of them want to chirp in uh, on any point, I'd really be happy about it because I want to talk to Harold about the responsibilities of public access producers. And in particular, I want to uh, talk about uh, a show that I had with David Casavis. And David Casavis, as you know, is borough president. Mm -hmm. oh, he was running for borough president. Yeah, ran for it. And David Casavis and I did a show about co-ops. And so I'm going to run this show after that show with David Casavis. And if Josh and Shanti is feeling comfortable, because Shanti, you were there. Actually, Shanti, why don't you introduce yourself to, to the audience? Put us on a two-shot and say hi. I'm not sure she'd know how, but... Uh, oh, well, okay. And yeah, we're giving a little Shanti, you want to say here. hi in the control room? Just so people can hear you? Or Josh? Or maybe you're not Hello. there? Hello! Okay, great. Oh, there she is. Great. Okay, that's Shanti. Yeah. So Shanti, you were there when we were shooting David Casavis talking about the, the co-ops. And Josh knows a whole lot about housing, so I'm hoping as the 58 minutes progresses, anything that, anything that comes up that grabs you, just push on that little button and let us hear what you're thinking no matter how much Harold or I are talking, because we're good talkers. Because my, my point here is that we have a housing crisis in New York, and I feel we need to pull together as many elements as possible to resolve it. Otherwise, what will happen is the rich will just sort of pull, push out the poor, and the poor oftentimes are poor because they're concentrating on more artistic accomplishments that in the end is what gives the culture to the area. So that's why we need to have all income streams represented. Hmm. So what are your thoughts about housing? And oh, well, housing, and yeah, I don't know where to begin. It's such a big thing, isn't it? It's a basic thing. Having a place to live is basic and um, I heard what you say. The, I'm not, I, I think the basic reason that people and the social economic uh, lower end of the ladder, I don't think it, it might be. Yeah, artists do. We say starving artists or people that are concerned with anything other than, you know, commercially viable, monetized, accepted institutions and so forth often are that way. Edgar Allan Poe ended up... Uh, Vincent Van Gogh is the great one. He painted all those wonderful paintings. And his brothers supported him. Well, Theo, well, yeah, Dear Theo. Theo the only, I think letters. they stole one painting in all of his life. But he was ahead of the curve. Uh, he was ahead of the curve, history's curve. But if it wasn't for the generosity of his brother, yeah. God knows what would have happened. Right. And in general, the thing is that he wasn't doing something with his life that fit into the economic model. So I think the thing, the problem with the housing or the housing with anything is that. Um, uh, well, I've got my own thoughts on it, which are theoretical, but I think the major problem that gets in the way of having a system by which uh, people could have their needs met is uh, arcane, and it gets back to um, the uh, economics, and then beyond that it gets back to the theoretical implications of the economic systems by which we well, form capital and distribute income are out of sync with what we require, the age requires, but that's a large issue. The now main people, reason they have trouble is they don't have money. Right. Okay. Well, <coughs> see, here's, 
here's what I was sort of struggling with with Molly, and Molly goes, and she's out front about this, she goes through cycles of extreme depression, and she went on Jane Goldberg's Really Real Reality TV group therapy uh -huh. about this. Uh -huh. And, but in a, on a practical level, mm -hmm. um, when she's feeling pressured about finances and paying her mortgage and so on, she gets really tight and scared, of as, course. As, as we all get really tight and scared, the idea yeah. of being out on the street and so on. Yeah. And, and everybody shares this fear from, from top to bottom. The rich, money's like never enough to feel secure. Why no the, matter how much money you have, it's not enough. That's a very interesting you, idea. And, yeah. and, and it's an important idea to, to be aware of, because in order to resolve the, the abundance issue, we have to resolve what's going on inside us. So I, all I can do right now is bring on my own personal experience. Okay. And that is that I bought a co-op in Manhattan when I had money. Mm -hmm. And I didn't much think about what the maintenance was. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've learned more as things get tighter for those that had rent control, mm -hmm. why my situation is different from those with rent control. Now, had rent control uh, continued in the building where I was in, I never would have had an opportunity to be there. So I also have to be very grateful that I came to New York as a stranger and simply with money was able to buy into a co-op that, yeah. then, that then had a maintenance that I now feel is outrageously out of sync with the realities of what it actually costs to maintain. Hmm. Well, that, you can take that up with the board. Uh, well, I, in, they have I, any, I intend to take it yeah, up right, with the board, yeah. but the, the tendency <laughs> is, is to want to make these uncomfortable problems go away just by throwing money at it, by just saying, well, you know, I'll deal with this theoretically, but I realized as the problem was mounting up over time, uh, this was exactly, the crisis point was exactly the time for me to kick in what my full abilities were. So now with Molly, what would happen is she, she'd say that first you have to get secure, and once you're secure, then you're in a position to give your gifts. And there, I think and there's there, something and there, to that, yeah. There's definitely yeah. something to it, mm -hmm. because had it not been for, for that kind of vibe, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to prevail upon her generosity mm -hmm. to bail me out when my finances changed to, mm -hmm. to cover my mortgage mm -hmm. and my maintenance. But my maintenance is much higher than my mortgage. Really? Okay. As, mm -hmm. as, um, as my roommate. Mm. So, but what happens to her, and I'm not picking on her, I'll, I'll, I'll then say what happens to me mm. as we go through these crises of realizing that we may not even have a roof over our head, is that she calls to herself, because I do believe that what you put out, you create your reality. So as you're thinking about something, you're going to generate what you're thinking about. Well, that's part of the you, you, Protestant, or that's part of the ethic of, you know. Well, it just seems that that's what happens. Well, that's you know, part like, of like I learned, age, I know. learned how to pray when somebody ripped me off, and it, and it was so painful. This was back in California. I helped a Vietnam vet and half of the, what I had to pay him was paid by the VA. Well, I sent him up with a bunch of wicker furniture to Lake Tahoe, and he sold off the furniture and didn't pay me. He ran out of town. So the $1,000 was what I needed to cover my rent for my store. I can't believe it. I was paying $1,000 a month for a store. Mm. I'm paying $1,000 a month for 322 square feet for a co-op. Oh, how many square feet was the store and where was it? Oh, location, the store location? was in Berkeley, California. But well, the point is, it was, it was like a big a business. Mm. And that's what uh, Robert Ashford talks about with binary economics, is that you need uh, more than just uh, the ability to borrow money so you can buy a house, you need to borrow money or whatever so you can get into a business that then is, is reaping something. Mm. So my business on good months could give me $10,000 a month, mm -hmm. 20000 even in the high points, and then from that I invested in cellular. But um, the, the point that I was saying is that I learned how to pray when this guy ripped me off because I said, please don't let this happen to me. So the first knee-jerk reaction is not to be ripped off, is to not trust anyone. You're right. So the second thought came up was, oh, let this not trusting people, not be at the, let not being ripped off, not be at the expense of not trusting people. Because mm -hmm. I want to trust people yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. So how do you both trust people but not be ripped off? So it was like my mind was spinning mm -hmm. and this paradox was going and it just like shot up and I realized, 
That's, I was learning how to pray. I didn't want to be ripped off. I so much didn't want to have that anxiety and that <coughs> fear that there was a thousand dollars that I needed to pay my landlord. What if you didn't need a thousand dollars? Well, what, what if you had ten thousand dollars and it was just is, a sidebar? But you were disappointed in I, the lack of character on the I, person. I totally understand mm -hmm. that, but I'm trying to say that I was catapulted into a crisis position because so, of the, the need, the physical yeah, need. So yeah, so prayers. Right. So I'm saying like, this wasn't need. this wasn't a, a new age thing. This was my actual experience where I had this this uh, ability to put a paradox through my mind and. I don't know exactly what happened, but I mean, it's not like a thousand dollars fell on my feet to say, oh, the answers to my prayer. But something was deeply formed inside me that I want to be the kind of person that's not vulnerable to attack, mm -hmm. to being ripped off. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be so savvy Guarded. and so yeah, armored, invulnerable yeah. that mm. that I don't trust people. Yeah, so armored. I that I don't, yeah. So I want to like. So I want to like interact. So now, mm. in Molly's case, what she does is when this happens, this crisis, it builds up. She can't pay the mortgage on her place. She can't help me out with my place. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, the union calls, and she's working, 12 hours a day, six days a week. Sometimes the 12 hours can go to 15 hours. She makes money and then she burns out. Then she winds up on her sofa in depression because she doesn't have any energy left to do her own things. And even when she comes up to New York and she does shows and stuff with me, she feels she's helping me on my stuff. So this is what she's going to Jane Goldberg's group for. And now she's working on union, she can't even go to the group. So she'll probably see Jane privately. And that's why I'm going down to the Center for Modern Psychoanalytic Studies to study the man named Hyman Spotnitz, who could help schizophrenics and so now, mm. as Molly and I are kind of battling, and she's saying, Paula, you don't care about money. You're blocking money. And I said to Jane, well, am I blocking money? And Jane said, no, it's not that you're blocking money. It's just that you don't care about it, Paula. So I said, well, that's not a good thing either. You know, I have to, to resolve how to stay in New York, how to keep the shows going and stuff. Mm -hmm. Practical. So yeah. as Molly and I are going back and forth on it, I'm saying, I don't want to pray for money. Because if I pray for money, I can get the job, I can get the money, but then I may have the money or the job, and I'm so occupied with the job that I don't have any time left to advance the stuff I'm trying to bring to my viewers. Yeah, I would think the that, major. Oh, I'm sorry. Go but ahead. I know I'm talking no, so that's long. All right. and I know, well, but, it's, but a, it's an interconnected but I'm thing. Yeah, definitely. Gonna, yeah, you're laying you've got out a pattern. Yeah, because yeah, you've got 58 minutes, and yeah. I'm so eager for you and your experience to to express this. So, if if you're working on your things as an artist, because I've done both, I've run a business and I've worked as an artist. When you're working as an artist, you truly have to keep your field pure. You have to just. You, it's, it's like you, you throw your soul ahead, like when they jump over hurdles, the, the horses, I say, that you throw your heart over first, and then you have to catch up and catch your heart with the horse. Mm. And that gets you over your fear or whatever, because you have to reconnect with your heart. But you have to Leap make of this, faith, so yeah, yeah this, mm. this, this huge effort. And mm. my frustration as a public access producer is, is I know that viewers, are not going to go to their oncologist and say, I don't want to do chemo and radiation because farther down the rabbit hole is presented material. But as a public access producer, I want to inspire scientists and doctors to step up to the plate, people who can risk their institutional funding to start saying what's really going on. So, but it, before I can do that, I have to, I feel, empathize with the position that, that, that they're in. So as I was struggling with mm. Molly and Jane and trying to figure out, is this my hang up? Is this my limitation? I'm just right at the bottom of the barrel. My father dies. My I'm father really sorry. Constantine was a great guy. I really was a great and by, spirit. My father and my family feel yeah. they enable me by mm -hmm. public access, so they don't give me any money. They don't think mm -hmm. this is right. My mm -hmm. father uh, took all of the therapies that I'm against, mm -hmm. that, that, that my research is showing it was harmful. But these were also therapies that is part of the system that he believes in, mm -hmm. you see. So that's why he chose th those, and I honor that. Mm -hmm. So the point is, is lo and behold, 
in the midst of all this crisis, a viewer, I didn't even have time to tell you this because mm. of all what you and Maggie are going through, mm. a viewer from Florida is sending me $1,000. That's good. That's it's a good. donation. Uh -huh, it's that's a flat good. out donation. Very good. And what that did as a vote of confidence was enormous. I sat down and started writing letters to Dr. Mishalom in Israel, who's done the early work on THC. Uh, the psychoactive ingredient in cannabis that he discovered in 64. He too kind of flies just not by the seat of the pants, but he has funded himself with his little tiny lab. Mm -hmm. It's not any big one billion dollars coming from the American Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. Some of the most hopeful, promising research is not being, it's not being funded. Yeah, and you, yeah, okay, uh-huh, yeah. You know? So then I wrote also to the Robert Schockenbach Foundation, mm -hmm. and I got a response this morning. So mm -hmm. I'm feeling somehow the crisis, my own personal crisis, put me in a position where I said, Molly, this is the situation. It's not me go out and get a job for a year and then come back to this later. It's living with this crisis now. It's including the viewers because I also feel the economic model on YouTube isn't right. The free, free, free stuff means that you can have infiltrating the information misinformation, whereas the information you and I present is stuff we've lived through. So I don't know how transparent you want to be about your own situation with co-ops, but I'm feeling my situation is such that I may have to take a placard like I did at Ground Zero saying 9-11 was an inside job mm -hmm. when I believed it was an inside job and not 40 corporations and advanced weaponry and say co-ops <coughs> are an inside job. Co-op board? Co-ops. Co-ops. It's not yeah. the boards. Yeah. It's not because the boards are kind of like well, they the vary. puppets for the yeah. whole thing because yeah. it's it's the monopoly behind it. And so yeah. I don't know how bold the Henry George School will be. I don't know how bold Robert Schockenbach will be. But I do believe that that monopoly is hurting both those who the monopoly restricts access to the resources, but also those who are holding the power of the monopoly because they're now so disconnected to empathize with the masses, they don't even know how to connect with, with the poor. You know, unless some of the poor can be creative and kind of catch their attention artistically. Mm -hmm. So that's my long spiel on that. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of interconnected things, yeah. H how do you feel about it? Well, I don't know do where to begin. Do you want to talk about your I don't, I, I, No, I, I'd rather not do that very much because that has to do with lawyers and all that. We're in that. We've been doing it. But it looks somebody's okay. got to talk about it. When, well, who's going to talk about it? Maybe well, it won't be no, on the Herald if Channel I may, show, if, I may, there's a, if I may, yes. uh, there's a lot of people who are willing to, uh, in fact, I would think if you look at human society in general, probably the single most uh, significant lodestar of human behavior is making money. That's probably the major thing that holds the society together. The attention of that is sort of comparable to doing what you have to do. And learning to do what you have to do within the system is right. the major thing that holds together our it's, institutions. It's, it's so major. It's, it, it it's stopping science. Well, I don't know it's, if it's stopping it. It's 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 it's. Um, I don't know if it's the same if you're in no, school. No, excuse me. It's stopping science benefiting the masses. Well, because the masses aren't studying enough science. They're trusting that the institutions are doing their job, and the institutions well, aren't doing their job. Well, they they're may blocking. They're, they're not only not doing the science. Lynn Margulis is really doing that now. She's really, and, and Susan Mazur is reporting beautifully on it, that uh, there's, there's a lack of, uh, it's very worrying because there's becoming, even in intellectual circles and so forth, there's a widespread lack of, trust, if that's the right term, or in the, in not only just a particular thing, but the scientific process, because the scientific process, the peer review and so forth, has been so politicized by economic special interests that have big issues the that is they want. Well, the, no, the, the there, word is corruption. Well, no, there's a word for it. It's corruption. Well, it would be corruption in that way, but the thing is, science is supposed to be submitted to the but scientific process. But see, even when I procedure. say that, when I say that word, it's so, it sits on you, it's so uncomfortable. What is? What corruption. word? Corruption. Oh, it's corruption. an uncomfortable world. To well, the only work. thing is that corruption could be something, could be something like Mr. Madoff or somebody who did something that was against the law or Willie Sutton went to rob banks because that's where the money was. So if somebody does something against the law or some, does something against an ethic 
is one thing, but another way of addressing it um, is, is systemic. That it's not against the law. It's the, it, that's a way to hide some people or find some people for a generalized. We well, have oversight committees, institutional oversight. They committees. try to develop those kind of things, I guess. If you're talking now, but then now, the oversight committees get corrupted. Well, yeah, but what well, the point I'm saying is, corruption connotes somebody doing something wrong, like a criminal doing something against the system. But it leaves open the thing that the system itself and the institutional assumptions of the system is okay. It's not a systemic so, problem. But, but where do you stand? Up. Like if you if you read through the the co-op rules and regulations, they make it abundantly clear that you're not talking about rent, you're talking about maintenance. Yeah. And because of that, the state attorney general approved it. Yeah. You know, there's there's a certain uh, legal right. package that and has to be approved. Uh, it never should have been approved. Well, because it's not maintenance. Okay. Everybody will then assume that it's rent. They go, oh, you live in Gramercy Park, therefore it should be higher but not if it's maintenance. If it was rent, it should be higher. So when you're talking about the system, I mean, I'll go along with you on the mm. system. Who has to stand up? Should it have been the attorney general? Instead of, he writes a disclaimer and saying, beware, this could be the most important investment of your life. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, $160,000 was not the biggest investment I made in my, in my past, so I didn't think about it. But now when finances change and it's the last thing I own, it's also the roof over my head and my home. In, yeah. which, case, no. in which case, it was very dangerous when they took a home situation connection to the earth, which is where you get Henry George Hey guys, could and I you, ask a question? Um, I would so. This is your yes. show, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to ask, uh, bring something to your attention. In the Sunday Times... Hey, hey, Josh, 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 just one second. I, I want you to bring it, but I want you to bring it related to what I just said. I said connecting to the earth and your home is is ha, was under real estate law. The Henry George people say you still see vestiges of this understanding of access to resources in real estate law, but the co-ops severed that and made it just another investment. So I just want to get that out, Josh, and if you want to address that, I'm so happy to hear you address it. Josh? Yeah, well, um they pushed the co-ops down our throat and they told us that we really own the co-ops but we really don't because as the henry george school points out we do not own the land when we own co-ops and we are subject to very frequently a, a tyrannical uh, co-op board and so on so we find and and then there are all kinds of rules as you know so we find that not only do we not own the co-ops, but we certainly do not have more rights very often. And the expenses keep growing. So what do you have to jo say about that? Jo Josh, do you have personal experience with co-ops? Oh, there's, there's, what you put on was uh, uh, David Casavis. Can you put that back on again? And then he pays taxes to the city for the Well, land? he sells it and he doesn't pay taxes anymore. He takes your money when you buy the, the, con the individual condo. The condo. Let me separate, make a, okay. a real separation. Okay. The cooperative is a business. And when you buy uh, an apartment, you're buying shares in that apartment. And you are also buying a piece of the remaining mortgage on the block and lot. So you really have two mortgages. You're taking a mortgage out, or part of it is out on your percentage of the block and lot, and you're also taking out a mortgage to buy the shares. So there are two pieces involved. Now this is very important to understand. Right. When you buy the shares, you are part of a corporation. Every building becomes a corporation. Every building. Right. That's a co-op. Not a condominium. I, you know, I don't mean to jump ahead, but just to keep any viewers who think that this is probably not one of my most exciting shows oh, to, sorry, to be everybody. posted, that um, buying those shares, the price that you pay to get your co-op, seems remarkably like trying to buy out people in that sort of blackish market who are sitting on a rent control apartment. That's it seems story. as though you're buying into the privilege of paying rent at a certain value which you th seem to think is going to be maintenance. It, it looks no. like it's controlled. No, no it's not. 
I know uh, it's not, no soft, but right? you, you get the feeling from when you read up the rules of the co-op that what you're paying is not rent but maintenance. And you go, well, how much could it cost to maintain a place? Well, you're ta paying two pieces within that. You know, when, when you say right. maintenance, within the maintenance is, is the mortgage the mortgage for the right. dirt under the building. And I'm saying that to make it simple. Right. I mean the, the block and the lot. You're paying right. for that. And then you're also within the maintenance, you're paying for, for uh, garbage pickup. You're paying for water. Right. You're paying for uh, the elevator. It's, a lot of times there's an elevator in a co-op. Right. And when the elevator breaks down, the co-op has to pay for it. And that the elevator is an expense as well. Right. If you have a doorman, you're right. paying his salary. $26 an hour for a union doorman. Yeah, I, 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 well, I won't get into that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but basically, I still want to say, um, Progress in Poverty by Henry George, you can come in on this. A hundred years ago, every intellectual knew this book. And he has the simple formula at the beginning of um, in hard economic times, capital goes down, wages go down, and rent goes up. So it seems as though co-ops is, is really rent. And you have a crisis because people get forced out of their homes. Well, people get forced out of their homes, all right, but I, or co -ops. I, I wouldn't. I, I, he lived in a time before co-ops, or a time yeah. when co-ops were very, very small. Remember, right. the, the co-ops actually come to us in the early 80s, although they started in the late 70s. And uh, on a government policy level, the idea was to have more people owning in New York City, because people who own, it was believed, had more interest in the community and keeping it up than oh, really? people who rent. Oh. It was always that, in part because it was believed that owners would Co-ops or condos? Well, actually both. It had to do with owners. Right. But consider that for New York City, with all the buildings up, a renter's city, it's very hard to convert it, convert it into an owner's city. Right. Consider that many of our buildings have more than 50 units in it. It's very hard to, to, to make that happen. To and own so, 50 units. So, you know, it, it's much better to have it was believed to be much better to have people have an ownership stake. And this goes through the Koch years, if you remember, Ed Koch was a uh, No, I don't remember, because I'm from Berkeley. <laughs> of course, and we're all 21, so we're too young for that. <laughs> but, but what happened was uh, the, uh, the, his administration and others wanted to have more owners in the city. And the easiest way was to go the co-op route. Now, you've got to be aware of what co-ops were before and what they are now. Okay. Now, before, co-ops were a very small percentage of the city. Right, the and white they, glove doorman and, yes, and Park white Avenue. And, and we still have white gloves. Right, and, 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 and you wanted your neighbor not to be dealing crack cocaine and prostitution no matter how much money they made. And officially, what's the definition of a white glove building. What do you have to have to qualify by our New York definition? So Josh, you were asking about the co-ops and I asked if you had personal experience with them. I do in my building a lot of people are co-op. I'm a renter, but I, uh, I have discovered that the real estate lobby believes in the domino theory, which the communists were supposed to have believed in. In other words, they may start with somebody who's a druggie or an alcoholic, but eventually they work up to people with money and try to push them out for more profit. So if someone has a co-op, they try to push them out for a condominium. If someone has a condominium, they try to push them out to tear down a whole building and put up a new one. So if anyone believes in the domino theory, it's the real estate banking lobby. And I guess the equivalent to the uh, domino theory is greed, greed, and more greed. So then, so Josh, what you're saying is a problem of human nature, it's greed. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so now Harold, you don't yeah. think it's greed. Well, I, I, uh, I, I, say, I, say, I was talking before about how probably the major um, impetus to human behavior on the planet is money how I get money, how I get security, how I get my kids paid for education. So it's fear. That's the, so so what it's I, fear. the point being is, the point being is that 
Um, I'm not, uh, I'm, I, I, there's so many people interested in that, and the whole society is, a lot of the news is around these kind of things. I'm not particularly interested at that level. I would call, because I'm thinking theoretical, so that's abstract. I'm not thinking about the practical, because you've got mountains and lawyers and everything who understand it gets very, it gets very specialized. I don't know very much about it, because I'm looking at patterns. And one of the patterns you just threw out there is human, human nature, the idea of a human nature, that there is a certain nature built into the way human beings evolved and so forth is called greedy. And I don't think that's necessarily fearful, the case. Or fearful. Well, greedy might be, a, fear might be a source of uh, that, or just avarice or any kind of thing. You know, some might people be. have said the markets go by your greed and fear. Well, yeah, the markets do, but that's history, and that's what we've inherited. And that's what it is. But if you go ahead and you start thinking, well, okay, like I think in uh, uh, co-ops, you, you, you buy shares in a, in a, in a, you don't have ownership of it. Well, what but, David said, it's a business. Yeah, it's business. It's a business. And there were, but a number of, th all these ideas are going by so quickly, like human nature, that's a big thing. I know. I think human nature is malleable. If you're sitting within a context and you've got um, one hot dog and you've got a table and there's 20 kids around the hot dog, that's got a certain kind of thing. Whereas if you've got 20 hot dogs and four kids, you've got different. If you have enough, if there is enough, and the question is, is it, is it ever able, are we, ever, are we making any progress toward there being enough? Can we deal with the idea, is there any possibility of assuming in a large scale way that the idea of insufficiency or scarcity could be in any kind of a way possibly transcended? at a large level, societally, is that possible? People say it's not possible because they will assume, just ipso facto, that there never can be enough. There never can be enough because human nature is inherently greedy. I don't think that's the case. I, I think it would be, I don't think it's that, and most people have a, you know, a diet to advance their own interests and so forth, but they have other things too. But the material condition is one that does influence human behavior and human thought. And if you're, I think if you're just basic, uh, the Marxists would say distribute, you know, produce according to, you know, distribute according to need. And need can be very parsimonious. You say all you need for the Dickens children in the orphanage, they needed only one eighth of a bowl of gruel to survive. To survive, you can survive. That's essential to be able to survive. But to have enough, to where people do not have to think about those things, that would be an, a floodgate to, to uh, that would be a floodgate to a renaissance of the arts and the, what's but called how the do goods you, of civilization. But how do you unleash it? Rather than it? the goods of, uh, you know, the goods, the goods and services that make up the economy. So, and we're at a period of transition. So what you're saying is there's no problem if there's enough for everybody. No, but it's But how do you get to there is what I'm saying. Well, how do you get to the place where there's enough for everybody? Well, first of all, it would have to be, is it, it first of all, if you rule it out, it's impossible. No, I don't rule it out you at don't, all. No, you might not because you think about things and everything. But, but I, but I, but, but what I, you never but what I'm concerned. You never hear anybody say that. You never hear anybody on the television or anyone. They're all, and all of our institutions And if you say formulated. it on public access, you're called a nut. That's interesting. Because everybody will just I was just thinking about today as I walked out. We have public schools and we have public transportation and we have, um, you know, and then this is public uh, and that's through the government, you know, they said I go to, and it's public, this is public access, but this is financed by uh, a private sector industry called cable television. So you can have a relationship to the means of production that produces something for the common good like public access cable television coming from a relationship to the private sector as well as from the government. It doesn't all have to come through tax systems where you set up public schools or something. You can have a yeah, different but I'm kind of system. Yeah, but I'm still looking for how do you unleash the abundance? Because well, certainly it's there, whether, you, whether you're going for the atomic stuff and nuclear, which I'm beginning to question because of what I've discovered about radioactive stones. Well, that radioactive um, stone won't detract from the fact that among other things, and it, it don't even know if it's the case, and when you're thinking abstractly, you're not thinking about things in the, abstra in the, in the practical, immediate reality. 
But That's I all I'm interested in. I'm, I'm interested in, in the practical experience I'm of a person having a roof over their head. Yeah, absolutely. That, 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 that if the knowledge is there, and if you are sharing this kind of knowledge, you want to share knowledge that's also going to make people's lives better. The study of economics has to be the study of human happiness if resources are important. I've never heard economics described as a, 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 the I, study I've of never, human happiness. I've, I've never heard it economics described. Economics is always described as the study of the, uh, the science of the allocation of scarce resources. I, I, that's I, always the way it's, and that's I, what is determined I understand. in the mind of I understand. people but, when they but, think but, economics, but, but, but thinking, that there's always scarcity. I absolutely agree, okay. but but from the point of view of the great civilizations of the past, you know where the pyramids came and and lots of evidence of of huge abilities and powers, the Vedas and you know the ancient scriptures and this 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 level of knowledge, mm. the study of economics. And re at, at one time, you didn't have math here and law here and medicine here. These weren't separate studies. They were all one study. So when I say the study of economics should be the study of human happiness, well, you say it should be. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's for, or in it's a way, it, in a way it, it is because if you have resources and you're not happy, either because there's not enough of them or you have so many, it's not giving you that connection to life where you feel you have lived life fully. To me, a full life means a life where you're connected with all of society, not that you're hoarding something and you're hiding something and it's got to be secretive and there's lawyers and judges and, and so many people will have a public access show up to a point. But where is that? I think it's right at that point where it's uncomfortable that you've got to have that faith or courage to say this has to change. Henry George stood up to the monopolists. Mm -hmm. He could yeah. identify them. It was a simpler system. Once he unraveled it, because he wasn't trained um, within yeah. the system, mm -hmm. I think he was just sort of a, a, a ship uh, cargo boy, you know, going around the world, and so he saw other mm -hmm. cultures at a young age, and while he had a job during the day, uh, at the printing press, he wrote at night. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think he had to pay rents like we have to now. I think even though he had a mundane job, he had more leisure time built within satisfying the needs of food and shelter that he could have the time to write. But he wrote freely, and he was in California where uh, the nature of the gold rush was such that you couldn't hoard land. When you had a claim, you had to work that claim. Mm -hmm. so, so he said that in California, these first principles were more evident. Mm. But after he got it and after the book was out, he had to stand up to the monopolists. Mm. They were people. Yeah, he was They he were inspired, judges, they yeah. were lawyers. So mm. he, he didn't say it was about, about systems. So there's this embarrassing point where you have to say, you, you either have to ask for money, like, like Vincent uh, Van Gogh, his brother supported him. The artists have to have sponsors, or you have to be bold enough to take on the system to say to the attorney general, why did you ever approve a system like the co-ops when we're not talking about maintenance, we're talking about rent? There's millions of people who would be able to talk about that. I would even think about trying to but understand it. But it's not it. even talking about it. Who's no, you, gonna change it? Who's gonna stand up and say? I don't think you'll ever change it by looking at the details of it. I don't think it'll ever be changed that way. I think you have to look at the larger pattern. How will it be changed? Well, it'll be changed intellectually and by understanding. But where does because that intellect not, shift? Because it's not, a Everything, every, in, if if we're at a point, the point being is we're at a moment of qualitative, qualitative transformation. Perhaps, perhaps not, but I'm in the opinion that we're at a time of qualitative, but not quantitative, but not a little change here, a little change there, but and it's does, not but merely. Where does that come from? Where does that impetus? Well, it comes from? out of the. Calls it down. Ultimately, as everything comes out of the second law of thermodynamics, you know, you got gradients within the universe, you have evolution go, and we've been but in it's an a evolution. It's a passive process, then. I can't hear you? you. It's a passive process. What's passive? No, it's not pa It's the universe is set up, and we've come to a point where uh, there's been an evolutionary process, and uh, we've gotten to the point where finally, after millions of years and so forth, we get past the barrier to organic process, all the bacteria evolves, and then we get to be other creatures, and then we get to a point where consciousness, in terms of the human mind, develops 200,000 years ago, 
we get to the point now where you can extend that consciousness into the environment and make it different in an Eden-like sense as a lot of all the creatures. So you can build an environment that is based upon another higher level human consciousness. And then you get to the point where those, web, those, those systems of extended consciousness tools and technology get to the point led by weaponry so that the people can fight one another and steal the grain from each other and advance their own so you're tribe within a context of where there's not enough. In order for my tribe to survive, I got to steal from the other tribe or, you know, something or overcome them. So you say weaponry So they get to leads? that and the weaponry gets weaponry to the point. Weaponry leads the way? The wep yeah, the weaponry leads most of the research of the political entities that run the world. And so you get to the point where the weapons are and you don't know it because it has to be modeled. It can't be made real. Uh, you can't test it in reality. But what about the internet? But the question, the question is that, uh, is that the case that are the weapons, and it may be they're not. I, I mean, I bring this up all the time, but I do believe it's true. Since about 1970, the weapons collectively that are in the hands of the human society exist, and not inflection points of theories of relativity and so forth, but are now species lethal. That if they're unleashed in a spasm of hatred, very dangerous, the Middle East now, uh, you know, all kinds of things could set it off. That if they're unleashed with wave weapons, germ weapons, all that sort of thing, that it would mean, perhaps, you don't know for sure, but it would probably mean, and there's lots of studies that model it, that it would be the end of our species. Now that could not have ever happened in 200,000 years. We've come to an existential new reality in the universe, okay? So that's a premise that can be tested in terms of the modeling. So you can test that. Is that the case? Why don't we ever hear that? Why don't we hear it in the news and so forth? Why do we argue about co-op boards and things like that? Or health care bills and the kind of things we do now. But that's there. Why? Well, the, because it's the averse of that, the averse of that uh, context of destruction, because what that's been about is competition on the military force, m might, gatling guns over mus muskets and so forth, political geostrategic advantage of some over others, because there's not enough. That's the basic assumption, and the basic assumption of human nature is greedy. And they say it's greedy, so there's nothing for But the adverse side, or the yin and the yang of that reality at a level of capability, not the reality of spiritual or any of the kinds of myths we've lived by and so forth, but the reality, the material reality is that it's very likely it can be modeled appropriately with the technological capability that human society within an ecological context has about the same time that the weapons became species lethal that we have at a level of capability, nothing to do with the reality, and all the institutions inherited out of history, the nightmare of history that James Joyce pointed to. But I'm interested, we have transcended, I'm interested in no, reality. We have transcended at the level of capability, the materi uh, material scarcity, material scarcity. We've transcended scarcity. Now that, wait a minute, let me make the point. You've been going on about co-op co boards and things, little parts of a whole thing. What you're looking at is a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm, a paradigm, and paradigm shifts. A major transformation I'm in what all shifts institutions it? What shifts and it? all of our thermodynamics. It's come thermodynamic. To the, Where is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics I is find the way the me. universe works. I want to find it in me. Well, I don't know about because that. Because I want to You're generate only, it. Well, okay, I don't know what I that wanna, is. That's, I want to secure. I want to see you, for myself and for others. You really the way to I'm get to that. I'm not going to wait for therm thermodynamics. Well, you, you, thermo. We were just talking about Kirsten's about ready to deliver, and our, our dear friend, the College Project, about to have a baby bouncing boy. I so wonder what a wonderful thing. It's a new life emerging, and so it's such a wonderful thing. And the pregnancy is nine months in the humans, 22 months in an elephant, tw tw nine months, and then there's a process that goes on. You're in the birth canal, and there's a process, and that process is going to happen. So it's like that. Thermodynamics is like that. And we happen to be born at that time. So we just wait. So all of our institutions, virtually all, co-ops, cooperatives, economics, lawyers, courts, nations, all of, the, all of the institutions that we've inherited and we relate to in terms of are out of date with what the future requires. So what we have to have is a system or an understanding of creating a condition that can deal with a non-scarce reality which will hold 
hold as far as we live if we make it. If we're able to make the transition to a non-scarce reality, then we build institutions in terms of that, and we have the capability to do that. So we're being tested in a major way. But it's not one part of the system. So you keep talking about one part of the system. It's not there at all. It's at that other level, at the level of, e of, of economic theory or political theory. So it's hard to talk about any one particular thing. All of our institutions are out of date. And I think we're on the verge of being able to realize a way of forming capital for technological development, and we're going to have to have an alternative way of distributing income to everybody. So, so you think Within an ecological context, we have the capability now to do that, so we have to have a system that relates to our future capability and transcends the outdated institutions, including virtually all of them, and have well, vision for I, that, and the intellectuals but, but, are falling down on the job by not providing a model. Aren't we the intellectuals? No, we're not the intellectuals. Who we're are the part of it, trying to be. Do you ever hear anybody, anybody ever say, do you ever see um, words 10 feet tall going around Times Square saying, there's enough? There's enough. There's more than enough. There's an overabundance capability if we just get it right. Do you ever see anybody say that? All they do is argue black and white. You know, uh, the, the news is all reported, and we're all fixated on history within the, the historical institutions, which are outdated. We need new institutions. We need new understanding. And it's not going to come from the politicians or their so-called leaders. It's going to come from the intellectuals. And there aren't any. There's hardly anybody who talks about things at that level because they'll say, wait a minute, you don't understand the nuance of the law of mortgage things, third rate mortgage, and they're all specialized out within that old outdated context. But that's their way of, of surviving. Yeah, that's the way of surviving, and, and they, they also say that's they the way. They think that big, because to think that big is terrible. It's not for them. They're specialized out by the educational pattern to think about what they're thinking so about. That's not, but you're saying they're. Yeah, the intellectuals are falling. You're saying that you, they're lacking intellectual guidance. No, the, the society, world society is lacking vision. Because they're lacking vision within a material material context, no cop out to new age stuff and all that, all that spiritual stuff. No cop out so to that. So are you saying what I told you was a cop out, that I magically got this $1,000 that no. came in? Well, no, that, you that, call that, it that magic. It, that, that it's my imagination that I was really, well, really Well, the thing like Jane really, Roberts really used to thinking. say that. We just had the program today we aired with that lovely lady who did it. She's channeled a book or something, all that channeling and stuff. And Jane Roberts, I loved her. She channeled her talking about science and the new age guys, and they say we form your own reality and all of these kind of age you, of Aquarius. But you told me when these you are sat there myths. in the room, you were, it was a scary feeling. It was very powerful because she was very powerful when she went. The idea of other consciousness, you want to stop short, nothing to do with spiritual now. Nothing to do with spiritual, nothing to do with but, meta consciousness, but, nothing to do with that. Material reality. But material a level above the normal accepted notions of material reality, which is practical to the needs of the people without okay. going to gods and things. There are no gods. There are no spirit. There's no Thor. There's no Zeus. There's none of these things. It's all myths that we've had in order to fill our need to have an understanding of human purpose. And we're coming to the end of that. I'm and what so, we need I'm is. I'm so sad when you say that. I don't think it needs to be. The reason sad. I'm sad is because I, in, in my investigations and experience, you can't take, say, the human body and just reduce it to organs. And, and a mechanical a reductionist process doesn't heal the body. There is something that animates a body. And of course, there is. Wherever the source of thought is, that's a worthy place to discover that you've got the physical body, you've got a, f a, a type of arrangement of thinking. If the body's not healthy, the thinking is going to be affected. If the thinking's not healthy, if you have a lot of worries, you bring it onto your body. The main reason Psychosomatic people, is right. a very real main reason phenomenon. people have worries is because they're insecure economically. But what I'm, we but don't have a system that I, allows them not to be insecure. I, I, I understand, but mm -hmm. a bunch of worried people are not attractive for forces that do have abundance, that they're 
and maybe this is what art a lot is. of worried people are very good art. candidates for slavery conditions within a society a lot of people don't even want to be told they're slaves no I know they, but they, they are consider it, no but I, they are I know that just that they were but, served but on a feudal that's estate. what Henry George had to come yeah around. that's right he come right. he came around and he explained it very well mm -hmm. and you begin to see that the slavery of the body is minimal compared to the slavery that's of the individualizing mind. and so it, when no? you're talking about intellectuals falling down on the job first of all the intellectuals probably don't even know they have that responsibility and second of all they're slaves themselves because mm -hmm. they've been trained in 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 that system mm -hmm. so where does the waking up take place I mean I think about this I all think the time. public access is I really important I don't think place. I don't think abundance people who have uh, trust funds or so on are more capable of waking up than somebody who's struggling on the street. That may not be. That may you know? be. That may but, be. But like I, I don't think to bring adversity is going to encourage it either. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember teaching TM in the in the South when I was around 21 years old, mm -hmm. and I ran into some of the Christian backlash, mm -hmm. and they didn't like the idea of a mechanical process to alleviate stress. They said, you, you know, Jesus takes care of your stress. So they found it offensive that I was teaching meditation in sort of a science, science kind of a they science, thing, yeah. science of yeah, relaxing right, the mind. Right, somehow, right, right. if you have a relaxed mind, you are running away and you're less likely yeah. to surrender to Jesus. Yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. So you get you get a lot of that when you surrender. Like the first step of the twelve step program is it's totally out of your control. That's a hard one for people to do who want to have control and that kind of thing. It's interesting in China they got qigong and they let qigong go as long as and you say it, and it's true. It, you, it, mind over matter and the way you feel, you can have a force over your own body health and all well, that sort of thing. You see them chopping you can, bricks and well, yes, all know. kinds of kung fu and that, right. but they have that, but they have qigong. And uh, the thing if for them, it's okay as long as it doesn't have anything to do except healing. Nothing to do with Lao Tzu, nothing to do with Confucian, nothing to do with spiritualism, well, because their, their, their religion in China is dialectical materialism, Marxism. They're in with the material world, not within the spiritual world of of gods and things I, I that people have had. I remember you resisted my. Um, that 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 relationship to the universe that awaits the liberation of the whole of Gaia. When's it going to happen, though? Well, I think it's due. It's like a pregnancy. I think we're due uh, for it now, and we're privileged to be alive so after ten. So you're into nature. Not the nature. No, process. it's all no. It's just cycles. It'll happen. No, it won't. It is nothing at all. It's synergetic. It may. Or it may be that we'll just wipe out this end, this uh, aspect of consciousness only, in universe, and we have that capability I, now that I'm we only, haven't had. But see, I'm only We've been protected. I'm only interested in discovering what I can do. Well, because if I can't do anything about it, I'm not interested. Okay, well that's good. Well, then you could go out, and you know, there's all kinds of things you can go out and do. Causes within the way, or you could join the Republican Party, the, Demo the Tea Party thing, or you could join the Communist Party. Why join or anything? Why do anything? Well, it's just a cycle. Well, no, it's not because synergy is the behavior of systems, and that's working within thermodynamic. It's the behavior of systems unpredicted by the sum of the parts. You do not know, if you're in the birth canal, and you're about to come into a new being in universe, or punctuated equilibrium when there's a new emerging species within the evolutionary process that we can understand within a material uh, evolutionary process. We've got that understanding of it. If you're in the womb, and you're going to come out, you cannot know what that is outside the womb. So we cannot know what but the universe is about the way our religions have tried to tell us. We had Thor, and we had the great walrus for the Eskimos, and they come up with you're the creation story. You're I trivializing. am because it is so. Mu it's very important. You may not understand what, what, the, what the baby is thinking in the birth canal. You okay, that's not, a thought. You that's may good. not know that maybe there's an animating spirit. It, maybe it has all infinite wisdom, and once it's out maybe. of the birth canal, maybe it shrinks down and maybe. knows itself as an as an individual. 
individual, and then you go through the whole process. You've got to have an opening. You know, a, a spot, spot nets is talking about schizophrenia even yeah, happening right. in, in the womb. Yeah, all you right. Know? That Cause, could be. Cause that's the, within the, the womb. The fetus is hearing, well, it's a metaphor, is hearing dear. the mother's voice. The idea of pregnancy is a metaphor for the species. No, but what It's I a was, metaphor for the species that we're gestating after 200,000 years, and it is time for punctuated equilibrium where there is a qualitative change. You leave the context. There was a consciousness before there was homo sapien. There will be a consciousness transcendent to what we've been going through for 200,000 years. We'll have a different relationship if we make it to a residency that will inter-accommodate us to the like universe. But that sounds like magical thinking. Well, it's not, it's not magical. You just use different words. You no, call yourself not. intellectual and I call myself spiritual. Well, no, but, spiritual but what, is what, something I what, avoid. What galvanizes the change? That, you know, we live in a limited body with limited things. I say co-ops because it's very real in my life right now. No. That's that's something very practical. If I can affect that, that's what I was sort of expressing to a viewer who I didn't even think had any money anyway. So mm -hmm. it's not like I'm trying to hit someone up. Oh, can you pay for my maintenance? Well, someone saw I was suffering. Someone appreciated right. the work that I did. They right. said you deserve this. So they saw that I go through a certain process to prepare these shows, and they. I mean, I don't know why they said it. I'm still kind of baffled, I'm, and I'm still going to explore it. Yeah. Because if I could understand it, well, that's maybe I would know not only mm -hmm. how to better serve myself, because mm -hmm. Molly says, first you have to take care of yourself. Well, that's, I'm thinking, yeah. if you take care of the world, you're thinking of, these are big thoughts that you're talking about, yeah. big concepts. That's the only thing worth but being if, considered. But the only thing worth being considered, but if you don't see anybody being paid to consider it, it's That's seems, right. You know, it That's gets, right. It it's very hard it for gets, them. It gets considered anyway because right. there, there's it this, this, this force except, that mm. says these are the issues that we need to grapple with. Mm. And then you, you, you find a way to make a connection to an audience and then that audience gives you feedback and then you develop with the audience. To me, that's how the growth takes place. Well, the growth is there. It's just a, it's just, no, it's just a matter. And, and there's oh, plenty. I accidentally the point hit this, being, so I don't know. Oh, we're all done yet? No, I don't think we're done. Okay, well, the point is there are plenty we'll of... Never are. There are you are done. You were done? Is it time? Well, to according to Josh, you were, yeah. you were now in six minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. We really? Didn't. Okay. Okay, Thank it's you. over. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're just on different planes, that's all. I, I don't want to have anything to do with spiritual. Right. The problem always comes when people push the envelope, when they bother right. borrow more. Right, because you go, gee, two dollars, maybe I can do four. Yeah, right. And it just keeps going see, that way. See, that's what I was wondering about, and that's why I put Henry George up, is that how come when I bought my co-op in 97 and it had a certain mortgage to be paid, interest rates have gone down, and it should have been paid down after. I figure I've paid about 100000 into it. Oh, okay. So why isn't it less? Why is my maintenance going up? Well, you brought in several issues, so let's start with the sure. easy one. Okay. The easy one is that co-op boards usually see the easy out, and any time anything has to be done, they just say, well, why not $4? Why not $6? And ultimately, the mortgages never get paid off. Now, the co-op board can make a decision. We want the, the mortgage to be paid off. I ran into at least one. Now, if they did get the mortgage paid off at, at the Supreme Court, not the housing court, because what you're dealing with is corporate mismanagement in this case. David, it's really been wonderful to have you as a guest and to just sort of feel a part of Manhattan community television, yeah. you know, that, that through the television we create our community. That's why it's called Manhattan Neighborhood yeah. Network. And you've just been a wonderful neighbor. I've really enjoyed working with you when you were running for borough president. Yes. And I look forward to viewers uh, emailing me, rabbitholecentral at earthlink.net, and I'll pass your comments on to David, and we can develop what the viewers have to say. Wonderful being here. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thank you very much. <laughs> And uh, be sure to pick up uh, your copy of Progress of Poverty. You can get it for a mere $10 at the Henry George School, which is on 30th Street and Park. It's also Social Problems, a nice hardbound copy, again for only $10 because it's underwritten by the Robert Schockenbach Foundation. I think uh, the Robert Schockenbach could, uh, could get involved with a lot more solutions. You think not much is going to change, but I think if we put a little energy into it, Maybe we could see creativity spring up in that neighborly kind of way. 
from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you in the control room. That's a wrap. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I hope I didn't interrupt you too much. Not at all. I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Okay. But I, it's fine. Well, I this. Just, I just wanted to